Patrick Stewart, he had never, I don't think, ever touched a drink in his life. He was the most together person I've ever met, both in working out, I mean, his body was everything. I mean, it says, you, you know, it's, it's an important organ. If you're an actor, well, it was to him. He was in perfect shape. I don't think he put on a pound all the time we did those Star Treks, ever. He was a fabulous actor. And so I said to him once, I said, when we first did the first show, a few days in, I said, you know, it's, it's, I don't, it's not that I'm not looking after you or anything, it's just I don't know what to say to you because I've watched you on the BBC, I, I know you very well, and I've watched you here, and there's nothing much I can tell you, you know exactly what you're doing and who the character is. And he said, well, if you do see something, please do tell me. And, 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 and I understand that. I understand that you're not just going to the other people. I've been around a long time, and a lot of people don't, 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 really give me a lot of direction outside of, you know, when you do the read-through. So he said, no, thank you. And it was Patrick Stewart. Great. So one day, again, besides being really together, two stories about Patrick, other actors would come on. And in America, you get used to the fact that they're Southern. They, they come and they make the dialogue. They learn the dialogue as they do the scenes. If they did that with Patrick, he would just look at them. And they would just wilt in his presence. The next day, they knew it off by heart. One of the great things about doing that show was that everybody knew their lines. Everybody. Nobody faulted because they had to work with Patrick. Okay. So one day, wonderful guy, one day he says to me, um, I was here doing a play in UCLA and I was picked for this and it's great. And, and uh, you know, I've been on a lot of shows that don't last a long time, you know, maybe 13 episodes like in England. How long do you think it'll go? Do you think it'll go more than 13 I said, I think six years. Why? He said, no, I'm being serious. I said, no, I think six. I was wrong. It went seven. But he was part of an ensemble. But what's interesting was that it took him from that ensemble, about 35 years, to become the star he should have been back then on Picard. And he made it. And he deserved it back then. So the idiots from Paramount, when I was doing the show, one of them came down and was talking or asking some questions. And as he left, he said, now, Paul, just remember, I know you're English and you like Patrick because he's a very fine English actor, but remember, the star of this show is Jonathan Frakes. I said, I'm sure he is. Uh, 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 he was a good actor. He was fine, but he wasn't Patrick Stewart. So Patrick is now leaving and uh, uh, the studio, and I'm passing him, and he says, look, I, I know I'm, I'm leaving now, but they don't need me this afternoon. I said, fine. I said, what? What? Uh, and he said, I, I've talked to them, so I'm just letting you know that I'll be back tomorrow. I said, fine. With you. He said, I have to tell you what, I've, I've got another job. I said, fine. <laughs> I said, what? He said, I'm doing a commercial. It's just a voice commercial. You have no idea how much money they pay. I said, well, you deserve it. Go earn it and have a great afternoon. Now, if that had been an American actor, I swear, this would have been the attitude. I'm going off to do a commercial, you know. You know, they want me to do it, but it doesn't pay much, but, 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 but what the heck, I'll go do it. That was the difference. And it was the difference because of how they come to the business. It's so serious. Well, it was, I don't know if it is now. So serious in England of starting on stage and being enamored with it and, and being around those people and show business being your life that you had to be on it. You had to take care of yourself. You have to stay in shape. Um, one of the actors I've worked with on some show, I forget what, over the series, the few times I went back to it, was he got bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, no, that wasn't even in Patrick's mind. It couldn't happen. You were this. You were Patrick Stewart, and you were this kind of a person, and you were a professional. It was wonderful to see. Now, it happens here occasionally, but then I think more so now when you've got ensemble shows than when you had one leading guy. Now, that said, there were people like Harry Morgan, who never stopped working from the day he left acting school. A fabulous guy, a fabulous pro in every way, as good as Patrick Stewart, except he was American. And he was a lovely man. And, and he was just such a professional. Again, a magical actor and a professional. He knew everything. And that was the nice thing uh, about uh, those kind of actors, were particularly from, from English. Not because I'm English, I'm saying this. It's just I've never run into that level of concentration um, um, in, in American actors. But they know more about the script and the story than the writer did because they take the time to do that because that's what they're trained to do. Now, here in America, we came, I think, one of the big bursts and one of the reasons, I think, was um, um, in the 50s when um, the actor studio came into play because coming back from the war were all of these people. Up to the war, they'd been scattered across America, farmers, steel workers, God knows what. They all came together for four and a half or five years thrown into foxholes, their lives on the line, meeting all of these people they didn't know existed. 
You know, if you lived in Iowa, you didn't know there were Italians. You didn't know anything up to that, that except what you maybe saw in a movie. So now they all get together. And they have this incredibly dangerous, sort of thrilling, everything life. When they come back and the U.S. government pays for them, one of their great steps forward, uh, pays for them to um, go to school and learn different things. They go to the actor's studio and they bring that experience to their own, to their own, let's say, Paul Bradley, whatever that element is, in them. That's when you had that explosion of Brando and Paul Newman and everybody else coming out of that. I don't think we've ever had it since. There's never been that kind of an explosion. We have a lot of talented people, but never quite to that level since. And uh, I kind of miss that. <laughs>